Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, March 19th. From the San Antonio Express News, my name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All of the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect clear skies and a high of 71 degrees in San Antonio today. There should be more of the same for this weekend, with daytime highs in the mid-70s. As state Republicans push to restrict voting, a new poll shows a majority of Texans want more time to vote early and do not approve of threatening voters or those who assist them with felony charges for violations. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Atlanta today. They'll meet with Asian American leaders to offer their support to the community after the shooting deaths of eight people, six who were Asian women, at spas around the metro area. Head over to ExpressNews.com to read more about anti-Asian bigotry in San Antonio. And now let's move on to our top stories for the day. The last time Marisol Gomez saw her grandnephew was Thanksgiving, when the extended family had gathered at her house for the traditional turkey dinner. James, then a happy 16-month-old, tried gravy for the first time. He watched football with his great uncle, then ran outside to play with his cousins and the dogs. His teen mother, Delani Charez, was her usual quiet self, listening and laughing with the adults. Now, James has been missing for more than two months, and his mother has been arrested on child abandonment and endangerment charges, refusing to tell police where her son might be. We have everything you need to know about James Avishares, his mother, and a family that has seen extreme domestic violence over at ExpressNews.com. It served as headquarters of the Texas Army during the Texas Revolution. It's believed to have stood at its current spot for more than 200 years, making it one of downtown San Antonio's oldest residential buildings. Now, a developer wants to move the De La Garza house. Not very far, in fact, just 42 feet south and 4 feet east. Still, the very notion of uprooting a venerable stone structure has some preservationists worried. Find out what Weston Urban wants to do with the real estate and where the procedure to move the house currently stands in Scott Huddleston's latest article. Anti-Asian bigotry isn't new in San Antonio, but the coronavirus pandemic has amplified and expanded it, members of the Asian American Society of San Antonio and other groups said Thursday at a gathering where local officials denounced recent examples of it. It shouldn't happen here, they said. The news conference on the steps of the Bear County Courthouse followed escalating reports nationwide of harassment and violence against people of Asian descent, including the deaths of six women in the Atlanta area this week and recent vandalism at a restaurant on the northwest side. Hear from the event's major speakers over at ExpressNews.com. Restaurants are back at 100% capacity. Sort of. And even though Texas Governor Greg Abbott has said we can take our masks off, many of the temporary survival initiatives introduced last year seem destined to stay. Among the most visible are the ghost kitchens that sprang up in the COVID-19 void. Existing as portals meant exclusively for takeout and delivery, ghost kitchens stripped the restaurant business model to its bones, slashing overhead costs by operating from just a kitchen instead of a full restaurant, dispatching delivery drivers or handing off food curbside. Veering towards durable, high-demand comfort food, they crank out burgers, chicken sandwiches, wings, stir-fry, and stoner food that's built to withstand the long delivery ride to the final destination. Mike Sutter explores the ghost kitchen phenomenon in his latest article. Short supplies and erratic delivery are causing long waits for inoculations. Head over to ExpressNews.com to check out our updated guides to give you what you need to know, including a list of major distributors in the San Antonio area. Next up are your need-to-know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more inside of your Express News subscription. The City Council on Thursday extended a lifeline to CPS Energy, approving $500 million in financing for the utility to draw on as it fights the $1 billion in charges it racked up during last month's winter storm. The U.S. House of Representatives on Thursday passed legislation creating a path to citizenship for more than 3.1 million immigrants, including some 500,000 Texans who were brought to the country as children or are taking shelter from turmoil in their home countries. 
As more coronavirus vaccines are administered, the number of new cases has dropped. State surveillance data shows that about a quarter of adults in Bear County have received at least one dose. A man hidden by debris was run over by a city utility truck Thursday on the southeast side, police said. The public works employee is not expected to face charges. A northwest side Walmart was evacuated after two juveniles allegedly connected to a nearby shooting ran into the store, San Antonio police said. Police arrested the two juveniles but are still looking for two others who may have been involved. In celebration of Women's History Month, a female majority city council affirmed its support Thursday to close the gender wage gap in San Antonio. The price of oil on Thursday plunged by the most since September, in another sign that the oil bust is far from over. Oil field service companies shed more than 10,000 jobs in February, according to federal data. It sounds like a cheesy end-of-the-world movie. A gigantic space hurricane packing 4,000 mile per hour winds is stalled above Earth, raining down high-energy electrons instead of water. Except this isn't a movie. It happened, and it's the topic of research published in a scientific journal. The Express News editorial board writes, quote, The surge of migrants at the border is a crisis and it will take time to transform the inhumane immigration system of the Trump administration, but we must get past the political rhetoric. On Dan Rodimer, the former wrestler who is now a candidate in congressional special election in North Texas, Gilbert Garcia writes, quote, Some candidates shop for congressional seats. Rodimer shop for a new state. We'll soon see if District 6 voters, like the old WWE watchers, develop a fondness for despising him. You can read Gilbert Garcia's full column over at ExpressNews.com. For someone who makes his living with his voice, TV newscaster Marvin Hurst has gotten what is perhaps the worst possible news. Throat cancer. Not once, but twice in recent years. The Ken's Five reporter who has been with the station for 16 years is perhaps best known for his fun, feisty neighborhood eats food reports. He's also a deeply religious man who says he relied heavily on his faith to get him through both bouts with the disease. Hearst's career was proceeding apace back in 2018. A two-time Lone Star Emmy Award winner, he was, in addition to neighborhood eats, also known for his segment spotlighting local youngsters doing good. Then, what he thought was only a sinus infection or the flu, was diagnosed as stage 4 throat cancer. Richard Marini has his story over at ExpressNews.com. Velvet Taco is one of three interesting newcomers to San Antonio's Mexican food scene, along with the sports bar Cerveceria 88 in Government Hill and the upscale El Señor Fish seafood bar near the Pearl. We have everything you need to know about the new spots over at ExpressNews.com. After closing its downtown restaurant in December and operating out of a food truck since then, the Health Forward Restaurant Farm Table is reopening in Southtown Tuesday. Time and again the past two seasons, Spurs coach Greg Popovich has emphasized to his team's young core the importance of defense. What happened on Wednesday night in Chicago was a perfect example. The Spurs playing Cleveland tonight. Most years, we know the final 64 teams in the bracket will play 63 games to determine a champion. But we can't take those 63 games for granted anymore. Read Mike Finger's take on the NCAA tournament before games tip off today. And that's all for today. This was your Express Briefing for Friday, March 19th. My name is Luis Vasquez. Please consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast inside of your Apple Podcast app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone.